It is a particle discovery of superlatives. Physicists have actually detected a cosmic neutrino with the highest energy ever measured, and thus presented experts with a full-blown mystery. For while the almost massless elementary particle at 220 heta electron volts has 22 trillion times the energy of an electron, we know neither where it comes from nor what has given it its incredible energy. To unlock the wondrous particle world of the cosmos, you sometimes have to go to the bottom of the sea. Or, to be more precise, to the bottom of the Mediterranean Sea. Because this is the location of the KM 3Net Neutrino Observatory which consists of the ARCA and ORCA telescopes. And while ARCA is located at a depth of 3,500 meters off the beaches of Sicily, ORCA was installed 2,450 meters below the water surface off the French coast. In detail, the components use optical sensors to observe the so-called Cherenkov radiation, which is produced by the interaction of neutrinos and water molecules and ARCA has now succeeded in detecting an extreme particle that exceeded even the wildest expectations of scientists. But before we go into this exciting discovery in more detail, we should first clarify a much more fundamental question. What exactly is a neutrino? Well, neutrinos are basically the most common elementary particles of all, but at the same time, they are also the most mysterious. Every second you watch our video, 100 trillion of these tiny particles race through your body at almost the speed of light, without you even noticing. The Earth and its inhabitants are bombarded by neutrinos day and night from all directions, but despite all this, there are hardly any traces of them. Steel, lead, or even diamond are no obstacle for the so-called ghost particles. But what makes them so ghostly? Well, one of the reasons for this is the fact that neutrinos are electrically neutral and as a result, they do not react to either electrical or magnetic forces in their environment. And this is precisely where their main difference to atoms lies. While the basic building blocks of matter are held together by the electromagnetic forces within them, a neutrino reacts solely to the weak nuclear force, and thus to the force that holds the atomic nucleus together. However, this force only acts in the immediate vicinity of the nucleus, which, after all, makes up just 0.000001% of the atomic volume. For a neutrino to react at all, it must therefore collide with precisely this tiny fraction of the matter, but even then, it may still be that nothing happens at all. Given this tricky starting point, it's not particularly surprising that the ghost particles existed only on paper for a long time. But how did researchers even get wind of the neutrino? To understand this, we have to turn back the wheel of time to 1930 and take a closer look at the problem that scientists were facing at that time in the field of atomic nucleus research. Specifically, the experts were working on an equation that would describe the decay of an atomic nucleus during radioactive radiation. And according to the laws of physics, the energy of the particles released after decay must be exactly the same as the energy previously stored in the nucleus. But confusingly, the measurements showed that this was simply not the case, and that some of the energy always simply disappeared. In order to finally crack the puzzle of this mysterious energy loss, Austrian physicist Wolfgang Pauli did something evil, according to his own statements, and added a new particle to his equation that compensated for the energy loss. Pauli noted in his diary, Today I did something evil. I proposed a particle that cannot be detected. This is actually something a theorist should never do. Today, however, we know that the Austrian's guilty conscience was unfounded. In fact, the existence of his particle was to be experimentally proven a quarter of a century later. How the ghost particle became reality. But how do you prove the existence of a particle that hardly interacts with matter? Well, with the help of radioactive beta decay, which occurs, for example, in nuclear explosions or in a nuclear reactor. In this process, a neutron transforms into a proton by emitting the electron and thus its negative charge. But at the same time, so goes the assumption, an antineutrino must also be created. And if this antineutrino encounters a proton, it triggers a change in charge. The proton thus becomes a neutron and the antineutrino becomes a positron. And it was precisely this so-called inverse beta decay 
that opened up completely new possibilities for scientists in the 1950s. As soon as the positron meets an electron, the two mutually annihilate, creating a tiny flash of light that can be detected by highly sensitive photodetectors. And since the entire highly complex process only takes place when antineutrinos are also involved, this indirect proof would ultimately also prove their existence. By the same token, the reverse conclusion is that where antineutrinos exist, neutrinos must also exist. And indeed, in 1956, Project Poltergeist was to provide the first indirect proof of neutrinos in this way. Carried out on the grounds of the Savannah River nuclear power plant in the U.S. state of South Carolina, the experiment was based on three steel tanks, each filled with over a thousand liters of a water cadmium chloride solution. And while the nuclear reactor provided a steady supply of trillions of antineutrinos per second, the 110 photodetectors in the walls of each tank were able to capture the telltale mini flashes of light. The most energetic neutrino of all time. Today, however, we know that neutrinos are not only produced by nuclear decay in a sophisticated nuclear reactor apparatus, they are also produced by natural processes. Accordingly, cosmic neutrinos are released by supernovae or active galactic nuclei, for example. And although these neutrinos are particularly rich in energy, they are rarely captured, and even then only by large detectors, such as the Ice Cube Neutrino Observatory at the South Pole. This is unfortunate to say the least, because these ghostly particles from space are considered special cosmic messengers that can provide us with unique information about the most energetic phenomena in the universe, as well as unique insights into the outer reaches of space. The most energetic neutrino known to date had an energy of around 10 peta electron volts. To put this into perspective, physicists measure the energies of elementary particles in electron volts, where the prefix peta means one with 15 zeros, and thus one million times one billion. But as already mentioned, the KM3 Net Observatory has now detected a full-fledged energy monster that exceeds the previous record by a factor of 22. And although the construction of the observatory is still not complete, it is already doing an excellent job of detecting the most energetic cosmic neutrinos. To be more precise, KM3Net uses the water masses of the sea as a natural detector tank and, with the help of spherical photosensors, captures the weak flashes of light that neutrinos and their secondary particles produce when they collide with water molecules. The signal received by ARCA originated from a muon with an energy of 120 peta electron volts. This muon had raced almost horizontally through the detector field and produced such a strong Jarenkov light that the nearest photodetectors were oversaturated. And to put this discovery into perspective, we have to remember that muons typically arise when extremely energetic neutrinos collide with atoms. However, since the muon was very energetic and also came from an almost horizontal direction, it must have been created by the interaction of a neutrino of even higher energy in the vicinity of the detector. And as already mentioned, according to the experts, this neutrino was traveling at an incredible 220 peta electron volts. For an elementary particle, that is incredibly high, or to be more precise, almost as high as the energy of a hailstone hitting the Earth's surface at a speed of 50 kilometers per hour. Why the record-breaking neutrino is so mysterious. In the course of this, the scientists were not only richer for the most energetic neutrino of all time, but also for the proof that neutrinos of such high energies actually exist in nature. For the experts, the discovery marks the beginning of a new chapter in neutrino astronomy, which is all the more remarkable given that the KM3 net responsible for it has not even been completed yet. While ARCA is designed to comprise 230 measuring units anchored to the sea floor, each consisting of 18 photodetectors suspended one above the other, only 10% of the measuring field was operational at the time of the record observation. Despite all justified euphoria, the scientists cannot avoid pointing out another, not insignificant fact. Where the cosmic extreme neutrinos came from is still completely unclear at this point in time. It had much more energy than anyone would have expected, 
And although the researchers were able to narrow down its original celestial location, the comparison with potential sources such as quasars, supernovae, and gamma ray bursts did not lead to a direct match. The same applied to the search for lower energy neutrinos that may have the same origin. But what about the background of the energy monster? Well, in this regard, the experts point out that we could also be dealing with the result of a so-called cosmogenic neutrino production. That is, the result of a process in which neutrinos are produced by the interaction of cosmic rays with extragalactic background light or the cosmic microwave background. So far, however, no such cosmogenic neutrino has been detected, and researchers are now hoping that KM3 net will catch more neutrinos with comparably high energies. Then the search, supported by classical telescopes, could help to reveal their origin, and thus reveal even more about the fascinating spectacles of the universe. And now we'll tell you how you'll never have to miss a new video from us again. Simply click on the thumbs up and subscribe now to stay up to date for the latest news. We'll see you soon.